we have the set 4.5 meta snapshot for teamfight tactics and i'm super excited about this because there's a new mechanic in the game which is the lucky lantern and that always makes things a little more fun makes each game a little different and i got 15 comps for you guys already to try and use in your own games and a lot of them are different from what's happened in last set so normally in the 0.5 updates they don't do that much but this time they really outdid themselves first with the artwork next with the champions because every single carry almost every single carry is different uh, so what's up guys some background about me i am a former challenger player and i make a tier list every single week generally on friday on my website at bunnymuffins.lol so if getting better at tft is something that's interesting to you go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below but right before we do all that, I just have a quick word from our sponsor. Let's talk about Raid Shadow Legends. A lot of us play TFT because it's both available on PC and mobile. If you guys are looking for a new game that also does that, check out Raid Shadow Legends. Whenever you update a game, you get new champions. My favorite so far is Harvest Jack. He looks like fiddlesticks to me, and I just love that type of character because they're all like spooky too, and they're pretty crafty. This champion's an anti-buffer. He steals buffs from the enemy teams, deals AoE damage, and also provides a lot of crowd control for your entire team. Next up, we have the Occult Brawler. This guy works really well. I know he's got an opposite body type of Fiddlesticks because he's got the dad bod going, but he's really effective at taking down bosses because he deals poison damage, which deals percent health damage to the enemy team. And you guys already know in every game, percent max health damage, it's always going to be a great killer. In a game where you need to kill a lot of bosses, he's your guy for that. Last month, Raid just released their biggest update ever. The main event here is the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 brand new bosses to take on. Download Raid Shadow Legends in the links in the description below on either PC or mobile. If you guys want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do, hit the link in the description or scan the QR code. And if you are a new player, you'll get the free Void Champion Bulwark, 50 gems, an XP booster, some energy refills, and even an Ancient Shard as soon as you get in-game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here, and these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days and only for new players. You guys can find me in-game under the name Bunny Muffins. It's that easy. I'll see you guys in-game. All right, we're back, guys. I have the overview of the meta snapshot. Again, I'm super excited because I have 15 compositions for you guys to try. I recommend you try all of them. They're all pretty fun. Some of them are much better than the others. Like, we have the, at the top Mage Elderwood. A lot of people are climbing super hard with this. The rank one in North America, he's like never been rank one before. So he's been destroying everyone with this composition. After that, we got a lot of like what I'm going to say, like the good comps are like super playable. It's the Zed comps, the Kale comps, Slayer, Fabled, Enlightened Talon, Reroll Diana, Reroll Nasus. It's funny, like we got rid of Moonlights, but we still have Reroll Diana. Uh, we also have Dragon Soul. My favorite comp so far is the eight Brawler Shivana. Shivana is one of my favorite champions. Uh, Cultus is back. Warlords is still decent. Reroll Mage is an option. And now you have different mages to roll with. Sharpshooters, they're still terrible. So you guys know me. I love sharpshooters, but they're just not great ever. So they're in C tier right now. And then Duelist, I haven't seen much of Duelist either. And Duelist pretty much hasn't changed with the last set. I'm thinking that they're the only comp that's like pretty much the same. But yeah, as per usual, we're going to be going over items. And if you guys are interested in how I do the meta snapshot, we have that over here. But you guys can check that out later after you watch the video. First composition, the S tier, only one S tier, and this is a Mage Elderwood. There are two different versions. So the first one here is a five Mage, six Elderwood version, and you have the Aurelian Soul here with jacked up items. Uh, you could use a lot of different builds on him, like Hand of Justice is good, mana items are good, uh, but you do want the Jeweled Gauntlet. I think that's the most important item. Rakan Sunfire Cape is the most broken unit of the set like in terms of like something that's like hidden OP not really hidden OP but maybe like something that no one predicted is Sunfire Rakan he just dashes all around he puts Sunfire on your carry so imagine you're facing the mirror matchup and your Rakan just Sunfires the Hextech Gunblade of Aurelian Soul because he dashes to him that's going to be a lot of reduced healing and then your Aurelian Soul kills theirs and they can't heal back up like, this guy just solo carries so many different stages. Uh, another version we have here is a 9 Elderwood. This one's really good, too. It just depends on which Chosen you get. You could go either Elderwood or Mage Chosen. And here we have the full Protect the Aurelian Soul composition because you want to put Aurelian Soul in the corner because he hits the entire map. Not the entire map, but he targets the furthest unit away from him. So the further he is away from the enemy team, theoretically, the more units you are going to hit. Again, we have the same item on Rakan, and then you always put Zaya in front of the Asol uh, just to protect him. 
And Zaya is a pretty decent unit as it turns out too. Uh, I know a lot of you guys like this section over here, but we have 15 compositions and the set came out like two days ago. So I did not have time to update all of these. Some of them have more detail than others. Uh, but the main thing you want to look at is the how to play section and you want to check if they're standard leveling or like some sort of slow roll strategy. I'd stick with that for now. I'm going to be populating this throughout the week and hopefully by next week or the week after we'll have the whole thing back up and running at full speed. So next comp we have is the Z comp. So you could go two options with this too, similar with the last build. There are two options there, two options here. Uh, you could either go Z with spirit or Z with ninja. So you notice I have this arrow here. You can't really fit both unless you're level nine, but when you're level nine, you can't get like Diana because she's a one cost. Well, you can, but it's pretty difficult to. So typically people just stick to one or the other. The good news from all this is that Zed uses the same items no matter what. Best in slot, RFC, Runons, and Quicksilver. Those are gonna be your go-tos and like your bread and butter for Zed. Also note that Slayer Chosen is much better in this comp than any other Chosen because then you don't have to run a useless Slayer unit. Uh, Slayer units, they're good, but you need to itemize them, and since you're itemizing Zed, you might not have time to itemize the other guys. So you typically want Slayer chosen so you can just run Pike, and Pike has CC, so he's pretty good. Typically for this build, if we look in the instructions down here, you'll see that you have a slow roll strategy for this. So if you end up hitting a lot of Zeds, go ahead, try to three star him. If not, try to go level nine or maybe switch to a different carry. We saw Kindred holding the Zeeks in the previous map, and if you were going the ninja build, just throw it on Akali. A Kali carry is also a thing. You could do stuff like blue buff IE on her. I've seen those do pretty well too. Now onto Executioner Kale. This comp is pretty good when you have uh, four Executioner. It's like one of the best comps if you have four Executioner, but you don't always get that. So it makes this composition a tiny bit unreliable compared to the other top tier uh, compositions, but it's still very, very good because if you do get four Executioner, you just automatically win. If you get an early Kale, it's really easy to get top four. And her items, similar to Zed's, you have the RFC, Gwinsu's, and Quicksilver Sash. So for those of you at home who are using your brains, go ahead and guess what the item carousel priority is going to be when we get to that item section. We have a special treat for the Executioner Kale build, and we are going to go in depth about how to play this comp tomorrow. I had a top ranked player make a guide for this on my website, so you guys can check that out too. Um, but we'll be covering it over in a video tomorrow. Reroll Nasus is the next build. This build is super funny. You put like a bunch of tank items on Nasus. You don't have to go like double titans. You could go like Bramble Vest. You could go Dragon Claw. You could go Jeweled Gauntlet. Lots of different options here. It's really funny to watch because he just completely counters a lot of these attack speed units if they do not have a Quicksilver Sash. And sometimes even if they do, uh, the fights last so long because they can't kill him that he eventually kills them towards the end of the fight. Uh, Morgana is great with the Morello Namicon and with the Siphoner, like they just live, all the Siphoners just live for a long time for like, they just keep healing themselves. It's pretty fun to watch. Um, I need to delete this part. Don't ask why that's there. Going on to the next composition, we have Slayer. Slayer is very interesting. Personally, I haven't tried it myself yet, but I've seen other people do it. They go for like both Trindamir and Olaf. Uh, Olaf is probably the main guy though. And it's kind of like the set two Olaf with six Berserkers where he just goes around bashing his head into everyone. It's pretty fun to watch. Uh, GA, great item on him. Runons and Deathblade, pretty good too. RFC is usable also if you guys want to go that route. Uh, but this comp, it's just standard leveling. You just try to go for all these four cost units. They're pretty expensive, so you generally roll at level eight for this. Uh, Fabled Vanguard Mystic. This is one of the more interesting comps. So we had Ari as the Vanguard Mystic damage dealer in the last uh set but now we have nico who can do similar things it's a lot different she doesn't one shot people like what ari does but she holds her own pretty well and you could put jeweled gauntlet on her guardian angel's really nice because you really can't have her dying randomly and then morella namakon's pretty good too i've seen some people experiment with hextech gunblade so that's also an option but what really shines in this comp is a chalice of power uh, the more chalices you have the more powerful your nico is the last thing I want you guys to keep in mind, you see that we have six Vanguard here and two Mystic. You could go four Vanguard, four Mystic. That works too. Depends what Chosens you get. Depends what your opponents are doing. Uh, so stay flexible in terms for that. And for this, you want to slow roll at level seven. If you have a lot of Nikos to go for Nico and Nautilus three. If not, just go level nine. Next build, Enlightened Talon. So not too much has changed here. It's the same like Adept enlightened talon the one addition here is nasus because we have 
Morgana, who is a siphoner, and Aurelia, who is a divine. So we get like divine and siphoner at the same time if we add Nasus. And that gives Talon the much needed lifesteal that he sometimes lacks if he does not have a bloodthirster. But I like going full damage Talon. Some people like the Guardian Angel, but I find that you don't really need it because he just kills everything with full damage. But if you are facing a lot of like Aurelian souls and getting one shot by him, like put a Hajie on Talon. One little trick, Aurelian Soul attacks the furthest unit, so if Aurelian Soul's on the top right here, he's going to hit the Janna, and if Talon's in the middle, he most often does not get hit by the Aurelian Soul. Just a couple things to keep in mind there. Whereas if you move the Talon over here, he'll go ahead and jump onto the Ace Soul, and he might die in the, uh, in the line of fire. This build, you guys are already familiar with this if you guys have been on the channel before. It's just standard leveling and then playing the Enlightens and trying to flex into other comps. Uh, Reroll Diana, great top four comp. Uh, you build the same items, oddly enough. At 3-star, she's still good enough to be played, even though she like destroyed people as a 4-star in the last set. Uh, you go Assassins, you go Spirit. You could do something like Deathblade Runons on her, too. I've seen people do that, but I like the good old Infinity Edge, Titan's Resolve, Quicksilver Sash on the Diana with buff items on Kindred. For this one, this one's a reroll build. So this one, you want to stay level 5 and do not level up in the beginning of the game and then just roll down slowly down to 50 gold to get 3-star Diana. Uh, on to the next comp, we have Dragon Soul. This one revolves around like having three mages as a secondary trait. I love Ludens on Brand in the early game. Early game, I find is super important whenever you start a new set, and I talk about that in my 6 tips to climb video at the start of the set. And it's just because builds aren't optimized, so if you have a strong early game, you pretty much get free top 4s because everyone's trying crazy builds and like, when they do hit their comp that they're aiming for, it's not going to be as strong as it normally could be. I give you guys some other options on Aesol, like you can put a Trap Claw on him. It's great in the mirror matchup because it stuns the other Aurelian Soul, and it prevents you from being one-shot by Aurelian Soul. Right now the meta is being dominated by him, so it's something to keep in mind as like a tech counter. A lot of people are not going to put Trap Claw as their like primary item recommendation, but I'm just giving you guys more options because like we already know what the best items are, as you guys saw in the previous Aurelian Soul comp. Something that's nice on Shivana is a Warmogs. Shivana, whenever she transforms into a dragon, she gains extra health based off of her maximum health. So the more health she has, the stronger she's going to be, which is why she's really good in eight brawlers, which we'll get into later. But since this comp doesn't run any brawlers, getting like a Warmogs on her is pretty good. For the leveling for Dragon Soul, it's just standard leveling pattern. So just play strongest forward. Uh, if you need to roll down on 4-1 at level 7, go ahead and do that, or if not, you can go fast 8 if you have a good start and roll down on 4-5. or five. Uh, Now onto the B tier. Again, like, everything's playable, but um, these builds, they just haven't shined as much as the other ones uh, when I looked at my games and other people's games. And 8 Brawler Shivana, though, it is such a fun comp. You just have 8 Brawlers, and Shivana just turns into this giant tank, and it's really funny. And Nunu eats people up. Gunblade plus Warmogs is really funny to watch. Uh, for your super late game, you have Set or Shivana 3. Uh, what I typically do with this comp is I go to level 8, then roll down for Shivana 3 star if I have a lot of Shivanas. If not, go 9, try to play a random legendary at the end of the game. You're also not forced to play 8 brawlers. You could play 6 brawlers, drop like the crappy ones like the Tom Kench and the Maokai, and play just random good units. So if you go fast 9, you have a lot of different options for like random legendaries there. Onto the next comp, we have Cultus. Cultus changed a bit. They got Sivir, which is a very, very, very good unit. And then Kalista got buffed. So Kalista now has more attack speed, and she apparently got a lot of her bugs fixed. So combine that with Sivir's attack speed, Kalista is actually a threat now. There are a lot of six Cultus variations with random stuff, so you could flex into whatever units you hit and then try to go fast nine or something like that. But if you want to go the nine Cultus comp, it looks something like this. You put TF in one corner as like Aurelian Soul Bait if they're on the top right, so just try to go on the opposite corner as much as you can. Worst case scenario, you could always swap Callista into the, this middle slot here if you're facing a lot of Aurelian Souls because sometimes she doesn't get hit when she's in the middle. Also, there are two ways to play this composition. You notice that there are two one-cost units. You could do a re-roll Cultist build um, with 3-star Elise, 3-star TF. Uh, it depends if you have a lot of good items for them or if you'd get a lot of them in the early game. Um, but I generally prefer to play the 6 cultist flex style, but it all just depends on the game. Warlords have a lot of different carry options now. They have Katarina. Katarina is good now for some reason. Uh, I see a lot of people playing her. Trindamir is really good. He AoEs a lot of people, and he's like a new 
type of champion. Samira, of course, is the queen, and she's really good because you can play her because she gives Sharpshooter and Slayer, and she can fit in any comp, and Warlords are one of those comps that can accommodate any sort of uh, legendary soup type of build. So you could run, like, three Warlord with, like, a bunch of random legendaries. They're one of the best comps for that, uh, just because they have a lot of, like, core strong units. And you could use Katarina as an item holder for whoever you want in the late game. But to play this build, you just need the Chosen Warlord early and Snowball with that, and then just do standard leveling patterns. Uh, if you guys are wondering, I'm going to be talking more about the standard leveling patterns in a future video, so hopefully stick around for that in the coming weeks. Next up, Reroll Mage. Uh, it's just four mages. You put tank items on Annie. Jeweled Gauntlet on TF's really good with like maybe Spear of Shojin or Blue Buff. And then Brand Ludens, as many as you can, he'll kill a lot of stuff. It's really fun to watch. I'm not too sure about how strong this comp is, but if you're a type of reroll player, like go ahead and try this. You could match this with any sort of tank line. That's why I have a lot of slots empty. So you could do like Vanguards, you could do Brawlers, you could do like Fabled, like any type of tank lines, pretty good with these guys. You could also go up to seven mages if you get like Mage Cap or Mage Chosen and run the other mages too. And onto the C tiers, like this is the only time I'll say like not to play some of these comps. There are just two of them. One's Sharpshooters, Slayers, it's like six Sharpshooters. And then you run like Olaf, Trindamir plus random tanks. Like you could go two Vanguard, two Brawler, or like just any sort of tank like Adepts might work. But yeah, it's just not that good. Like Sharpshooters are great for transitioning into other builds, but six Sharpshooters themselves, uh, it's very hard to get to that point because you need to get a lucky Samira and just basing your whole strategy around getting a lucky Samira, it's just not gonna work that often. So I just highly do not recommend going for this comp. Uh, maybe in the future we'll see it more. Uh, same for Duelist, like reroll Yasuo, sometimes people can pull it off uh, if you get a great Yasuo start, but it doesn't happen very often. But maybe this comp is a little slept on because no one wants to play reroll Yasuo because they did that for the entirety of set four already. Um, so now in 4.5, they want to try different comps. That's my only guess, but I don't really think this comp is that strong right now. Uh, but it is playable if you get a great start for Yasuo, as with uh, like any comp. Like Any comp works if you get a good start for it. Now onto the items, the item carousel priority. If you guys picked bow in the quiz I gave you guys earlier, like you get a point. Uh, I don't know what to do with those points, but you, you got one. <laughs> so... Bow's the best because so many people use rapid fire cannon and you need a lot of bows for that. Uh, so getting a bow just makes it a lot easier to play a lot of different compositions. Sword builds Zeke's Herald and Zeke's Herald's one of the best items right now. Uh, Rod, great for snowballing early games, great for Aurelian Soul. Glove, same thing. Uh, Tear, good for Hand of Justice, uh, good for Chalice of Harmony, good for mana items for Aurelian Soul. Chain Vest, Belt, and Negatron, they're kind of like the lackluster ones right now. No one really likes defensive items in this meta because a lot of it revolves around like just one-shotting things. So you try to not get one of these in the beginning. But if you have to get one of these, try to go for Chain Vest because uh, you could build like Locket, you could build GA, you could build Sunfire. Uh, and then Belt's good for Zeke. So uh, it's sort of around like tied between the two. But Negatron's probably the worst unless you're going Zed and couldn't get a bow. I guess you could go Negatron, but if you're forcing Zed, that's a little weird of a strategy at the get-go. Uh, onto the item quadrants. So I typically update this once a patch. Pretty much the way to read this is strong items on top, weak items on the bottom. I'm a little too far zoomed in, so let me zoom out. Uh, and then situational and versatile on the left and right. So you want to be building items on the top right quadrant. Uh, try to avoid the ones on the bottom left. And then the ones on the top left, these are really good on certain champions, but not all of them. And then bottom right, it's good for most team comps, but they might not be the best item. So if you're ever wondering about like what items to slam, like these on the far right are ones that you want to look for, because uh, these are generally all the team-oriented items or items that just work in every single composition. But yeah, let's sum up this uh, meta snapshot. So like Lantern, it makes it so you get a lot of items. So the carry items, you get a ton more items now. It's like, if you guys remember Galaxies from set three, it's kind of like that where you get like a ton of items. Keep in mind the Lantern, there's a 25% chance for four possibilities. The four possibilities are no Lantern at all, Lantern on 2-5, Lantern on 3-5, and Lantern on 4-5.
that's all after the carousel and yeah you gotta keep that in mind for things to play around with but try to go for mage elderwood people have been having a lot of success with it i'm guessing in the next couple of days people are either going to come up with counters or it's going to be overplayed and maybe it might not be worth going for that many games but the people who got first to challenger they pretty much played this exclusively but that doesn't mean all the other builds are bad because again like people are going to learn how to counter it people are going to start building trap claw against aurelian soul and it won't be as strong but it'll probably still be the best comp for this patch if you guys want to keep looking at this uh meta snapshot while you're playing your game and get like a quick reference chart go ahead go to my website bunnymuffins.lol should be one of the first links in there, like all my links lead to this page. And let me know in the comments what rank you were last season and what rank you hope to get in this season. Apart from that, good luck. I'm going to be coming out with a ton of guys. I, I don't know if you guys noticed, I've been uploading like so much more than I normally do in these past week. And that's going to keep coming. I'm going to be working with a lot of different content creators for this set. And we are going to make a lot of TFT stuff for you guys. So stick around for that. I'll see you guys later.